What's up, fellas? Ladies, we're on there. Everybody hear me? Yeah, what's up, Brett? Got you, Brett. Well, first off, happy new year. Um, new uh, new new year we're upon. Um, been a while, so obviously, uh, uh, I know you talk with Barry here in a minute. I just thought if I had a little bit of time here at the front end, um, talk about some events. Obviously, the game changer today, right, was a new schedule. Um, was told by the Big Ten, oh, maybe even a couple months ago, just with what happened with the COVID, that they were looking at rescheduling things this year um, and playing it out. Uh, so uh, I knew one of the big things that was going to change, we were set really to go to Penn State three years in a row after the after the COVID year. So I thought that was something that was going to change. And um, we weren't really uh, told anything other than that changes were coming. So uh, got that information. Obviously, uh, doesn't change what we had as our opener and really just essentially – uh, play all the same games. The only only one that's different is is playing at Indiana. So uh, we'll adjust and adapt to that uh, and and make it play out. Uh, I, I, you know, like I've always said, right? We'll just uh, tell me the rules and and we'll play, right? And and uh, the schedule is the schedule. So uh, I think it's interesting. It gives us a three week window, uh, a, a bye week, a four week window, and a bye week in five games. Uh, I believe five of our first seven are at home. So. Uh, you know, to, to have the advantage of that, I guess, is a good point. But the, uh, 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 obviously on the back end of the year, we're the only team in the conference to have two away games at the end of the year. Um, so um, everything has its uh, uh, um, um, story. But uh, I think that's the biggest one, right? The two bye weeks that we gained from playing in a, in a, in a week zero game. I really like those bye weeks uh, this year. I thought it was advantageous for us to have those uh, for our growth, our development. Next year is year two. We're going to be a little bit further along, but I think those bye weeks are critical things uh, to take advantage of and for us to have those two, to at least have it evenly spaced um, and not have them on top of one another uh, plays into our favor, I believe. So uh, that's that's there. Um, obviously, um, on campus here today, I can't really talk specifics because there's still some NCA rules involved, but we have our early enrollees starting here on campus uh, today. They'll go through a process here today, tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, to get them ready for uh, uh, classes and everything to begin on Tuesday. So not only do classes begin, that'll be our start of our winter program. So Tank and his crew have got things lined up. Uh, we got an eight-week window. Basically, the first eight weeks of school, we'll go through a winter conditioning plan that involves, uh, you know, uh, basically uh, five days of work for us. Uh, uh, with our kids during the course of the week. There's a limited number of hours. You could spend eight hours a day with them until we get to spring ball. So we'll go basically from that first week, uh, even though we can't start with them, work, start work with them until Tuesday, we'll work with them eight straight weeks of off the field, um, some positional meetings, uh, very limited uh, 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 time window that you can use eight hours. Sounds like a lot for a week, but it's really not when you're spreading it out over five days. So uh, the first couple of weeks, they'll be doing a lot of work with Tank and his crew while we're on the road recruiting the last two weeks of January. Uh, then we'll get heavily involved in week three, uh, individually with our players uh, uh, on the field as well as off. Um, but these last two weeks in January, as coaches, we'll be on the road every day. We'll treat that really kind of almost like an early spring recruiting. We're pretty much done with our, our class of this year. There's going to be a few, few modifications, but uh, for the most part, 22 is behind us. Uh, and then uh, we'll, we'll focus on 23, 24s and, and jump into it. Um, the only transition we had was with uh, uh, Coach Lunny. So he'll primarily take over uh, Coach Peterson's uh, uh, recruiting world uh, in the same area here in Illinois. Uh, Minnesota, we might share that with a couple different people. And then Coach Lunny has a pretty vast experience uh, when I was with him in the South, uh, obviously within Arkansas, but Oklahoma, Texas, anything in that region. And he'll be, of course, a natural recruiter uh, of national quarterbacks as well as any offensive player. So we'll have our work shut out for us there. I like the way the schedule lays out. We'll go eight weeks. I love doing an eight week window of training all together. Uh, then we'll go into our week of spring break and then five straight weeks of spring football. Um, after five straight weeks of spring football, we'll go through a couple of weeks uh, on campus with our guys. We'll hit the recruiting trails for our spring recruiting, uh, give the kids a couple uh, mandatory discretionary weeks off and then we'll come back and work them June and July. Uh, uh, to come back in and probably report almost the exact same fall schedule in early August to get us ready for work week zero. So uh, really, that's kind of an update in the program. Um, I think you guys got a pretty good grasp on, on the, the players that we signed. I can comment on those guys uh, that are here on campus, but we will add 
uh, some um, uh, uh, transfer players that uh, we can't actually comment on them uh, physically until they're enrolled in our classes on Tuesday. Uh, and then as well as some uh, non-scholarship PWO guys that uh, will be joining us as well that I can't really comment on them until they're enrolled in student uh, and, and, and involved in classes. So that's uh, kind of prohibitive there. But um, um, with that, uh, I guess I'll open it up uh, for any questions uh, and then I'll talk about Coach Lunny before I turn it over to him. Right, I didn't know if you're going to address just why did you want to make this change uh, from Tony to Barry? Okay, so we'll if we just transition, nobody has anything about the program, and we'll jump into it. Um, you know, I, I, like I said when I came here, right? Um, wanted to bring in uh, an offensive and defensive coordinator uh, that I thought could make us into the Illinois offense, and and um, you know, I, I, I like the progress that we made. We definitely played our best football at the end of the year, uh, especially in the Northwestern game, um, but really just felt for us to take the next step offensively uh, and as a program here after being in the league for a number of years, being out of it during my time at Arkansas and the, the three years in the NFL, uh, I just felt for us to take the next step offensively uh, was gonna really just help not just our offense, but our, our program, right? And, and for me as a head coach to continue to grow, um, uh, I, I think when, when I was in the SEC, you really saw the evolution of football, especially at some premier programs that that went to some up-tempo, no huddle, uh, um, still balanced in their numbers, but ran the ball in maybe different fashions. Uh, Coach Lenny and I were together at Arkansas. I hired him. He was actually an offensive coordinator at high school uh, in locally, but had been a guy that had played in the Arkansas system, had a great reputation in the coaching world, uh, brought him in and, and interviewed him and knew right away where I wanted to go. Um, once I was with Coach Lenny, uh, I believe it was maybe uh, year two or three, maybe even uh, uh, we actually um, uh, uh, divided our special teams up at the time to, um, we didn't have uh, the 10th coach. So we made our coaches, every coach kind of had a special team assignment. And the reason I did that was I thought it maximized our staff, but I also like to watch coaches who aren't coordinators at the time, learn how they can run the room. And so I put Barry in charge of our punt team. And it was something he had never done. The system we ran wasn't even a system he had been around, but I taught it to him or he learned it through our system. And then I watched him coordinate it. And I, and I did that for two reasons. I thought he'd be great uh, for the room, but also I wanted to watch and see it and, and learn him as a, as a, a potential coordinator. Um, uh, if I had stayed at Arkansas, I knew eventually I would have transition offensively. Um, we'd uh, been able to have success there and put up good numbers. I thought we might transition. I was kind of, doing a, a coordinator in waiting uh, uh, with Barry. Unfortunately, when that changed uh, for me, um, uh, it was a fortunate thing for Barry. He stayed there. Um, and then obviously uh, the last two years at UTSA, I've seen what he's been able to do as an offensive coordinator, right? He uh, took that program to new levels of success. I saw it firsthand as a competitor and witnessed it overall. Um, you know, uh, as, a, as uh, I decided to make transition, I began to look at different offensive coaches, different offensive styles, uh, different programs. And I just kept gravitating back to Coach Lunny at UTSA. Uh, conversations I began to have with him and even with their head coach talked about what Barry was able to do to install, uh, to implement, um, to put in his own verbiage and language. Uh, and then after I transitioned from Tony, uh, really just was impressed with, with um, Barry's knowledge, uh, how he built this package, how he uh, uh, communicates his package, the terminology. Uh, one of the things that jumped out to me right away is when he used the third tempo. So it's a tempo offense with a pro style influence. Uh, that really kind of jumped out to me and something that fit really quickly into what we were already currently doing. So um, made this transition to give Barry a chance to uh, come in here, install uh, really a lot of the same things he had at UTSA as far as the way uh, they're calling it, the verbiage, the huddle system, uh, the techniques, um, but really put a style on it here at Illinois that factors into what our player strengths are. And, and ever since I've been around Barry, we've always talked about maximizing player strengths and minimizing player weaknesses. Um, you know, whoever ends up being the quarterback here uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the season ahead is going to be great uh, driving force to what we do, right? And, and I think that's a conversation I've had with Barry that excites me is he's obviously got a system in place that is very balanced. Anytime you have production in a running game and a throwing game, the way that they have, 
uh, and the way it ranks nationally is very, very eye-opening. Um, uh, but also for me to have familiarity with him on, on uh, uh, just a certain core belief in how games are won, right? You may have a team that needs to have the ball rushed uh, X number of times to win a game, or you may have a team that you got to throw the ball around X number of times to win the game. Whatever we got to do to win is what we're going to be able to do. Um, uh, as far as that, that was the driving force, right? Um, had a, a great conversation with Tony. Uh, obviously, these situations aren't easy, but really uh, expressed to him how much I appreciate what he did and how he did it. Uh, a great asset to us when, when he came here and, and uh, the things that we were able to accomplish. But I just wanted us to go a little bit different direction, uh, also a little bit of more um, a system that that is uh, in place, that feels good, that's had success, and now he'll teach it to our other coaches. So uh, Barry will be the only new face in the room. Um, much the same when I took over my first time as a coordinator, I was the only new face in the room. So I had to teach the entire group what our system was, and that's what I've asked Barry to do. So he'll he'll come in and be the guiding light and, and teach our offensive coaches uh, what the system is, why it is, how it's communicated, uh, but also how it can adjust to us here at the University of Illinois. Thanks, Brent. Uh, so with that, I'll open up for uh, questions, anything along that lines, uh, or if there's anything else, I'm free to hear. Brett, not to get too nostalgic, but I know this is a relationship-based business, and I was curious how the difference in the initial conversation with Barry than almost a decade ago when you brought him into Fayetteville, it was, a, was it a different kind of deal and um, than, than it was in 2013? Yeah, it, it, I think you're right. Uh, it, it, you know, the football is, 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 you know, obviously driven heavy by schemes and, and terminology and X's and O's. Um, uh, but, you know, I, I really learned of Barry through his father, to be quite honest with you, um, uh, a proven longtime, very successful high school coach in, in Arkansas. And, and uh, uh, he was a very good agent for Barry. And, and uh, I brought Barry in and we had an interview and was immediately just, uh, very impressed with who he is, what he was. Um, while I was at Arkansas, Barry and I got very close. Um, he has uh, a wonderful uh, family. He has uh, a wife who's kind of this very special woman that uh, at the time, you know, I, when I first met him, I didn't have kids, right? Newly married and uh, Janelle, my, uh, Barry's wife and my wife um, uh, had a great relationship. And then Barry had two boys at the time, were young, young men, uh, Luke and Levi. And I, I, I uh, uh, had a kind of a moment where I knew I was having young kids and I, I really kind of, and I even told Barry at one point, you know, I don't know how many years ago, um, I, I learned a lot from him at Arkansas about Arkansas, but I, but I also learned a lot about being a father. Um, so it's, it's different this time. Um, but you know, uh, this, this, this move was made because I wanted to get a really good football coach in here, but because I knew him personally, uh, and what he's capable of teaching, uh, that that's why I made the move. Um, I think he's an incredible teacher. Uh, he coached in high school football, right? So he literally had to walk the walk of, of being a teacher and instructor. Um, that's very important to me. A lot of people can talk, very few people can teach. Um, and I think he's an excellent teacher, which really gets me excited. Thank you, Brett. Yep. Hey coach, uh, happy birthday, a day ahead of time. What's, what's the cake of choice? You know, Bob, I know it don't look like it, but I'm not a big sweet tooth guy. Um, so I'm, I'm, uh, I don't think I'm in charge of the cake department. Actually, ironically, uh, my wife's birthday is today. Um, so I, I think uh, I think she had the, the ultimate pull on what birthday cake we had combined. So uh, I am excited. I, I, uh, I've been in, in San Antonio the last couple of days with uh, the coaches convention, was able to get back. I didn't get home till about 1.30 last night, flew into Indy late and drove over and then uh, was in early today. So um, I'm, I'm excited. I get to go home tonight and celebrate my wife's birthday, kind of my birthday, because tomorrow I'm on the road again. We're going to uh, make a little uh, unofficial recruiting trip to try to recruit some guys back to our program that uh, will take me out of town for my birthday. So um, whatever whatever cake it is, it's going to be good, I'm sure. Coach, I want to get back to spring ball. You mentioned you're going to have a new offense. Well, the fans have a chance to see the see you this spring. Is there a spring game? What's what's the plan that way? Yeah, so actually we've uh, uh, tweaked with the idea. Um, uh, we we were actually kind of holding on our calendar until we found out what the rules were going to be COVID wide coming in uh, this uh, this semester. There's just been an uptick, you know, in different things. So there was a a point maybe about two or three weeks ago we weren't sure uh, how we were going to have our guys this first 
first week when they get back next week, but it does look like we'll have everybody in the building uh, ability to work out wise. So I'm going to stay with the program. Um, that last week uh, I have proposed uh, to the powers of be possibly a Thursday night football game instead of a Monday night game. Uh, so that's where we're kind of leaning, but we haven't been able to solidify. It'll either be um, hopefully on that Thursday or that Saturday, the last week in April. Thanks, coach. As far as you guys being invited, you'll be invited on a limited basis. Um, uh, obviously we'll have transition. So, um, you know, one of the advantages to that would be that we'll be able to stay remotely uh, uh, um, uh, 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 silent on some of the stuff we're doing offensively uh, and the modifications we'll take defensively, but you'll probably have a little more access than you had a year ago. Thank you. Yep. Hey, Coach, in your kind of longer drawn out statement about Barry Liney, you mentioned how the SEC has kind of changed what they did. Obviously, that kind of happened when you were at Arkansas with what Nick Saban did offensively. What is it about that kind of, to use the term that Barry uses, tempo style and tempo that you think can translate well to the Big Ten? Well, uh, two things. For us here at Illinois, um, uh, I think you have to recruit to what you're going to be able to, you know, recruit effectively year in and year out. And, and I do think we're going to be able to, uh, get our hands on tight ends and running backs uh, with my history and what we are. Uh, but I think the the blending of uh, one of the things that really jumped out to me with Barry's uh, team, especially this year, to have three receivers with over 50 catches, the numbers they put up, uh, and ability to uh, throw the football. So I think uh, a couple teams that we're going to play on our schedule, we probably be able to get – we need to get the ball in the perimeter and get the ball out quickly in the passing game. And that's what this offense can do uh, effectively. I've seen it happen. Uh, some run pass options uh, as well as – uh, a different way to use the quarterback and the tempo uh, that's really in his hands, right? Not only his hands as a quarterback, but also Barry as a play caller. Uh, as I watched the U, uh, UTSA's offense, it really I watched it in chronological order and because I knew we played them early. So I, you know, obviously had seen the game uh, that, that we played out. And then I watched and each week um, there was never just this consistent, this is what they're doing. It was, it was consistent what they were doing but one week it might be a run game, next week might be a throw game, might be a run game uh, that featured this type of run, the next week a different, they use different personnel. Um, I still think 11 and 12 from the conversations that Barry and I have had are gonna be the forefront of our personnel groupings, but uh, depending on the strength of our roster and the players that we're able to uh, add in uh, or discover, uh, that'll drive us in the future. Again, I just keep going back to the ability to be balanced, uh, the ability to use a tempo, and really the ability to play to our players' strengths and, and minimize their weaknesses will drive us. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Hi, Brett. Um, I know um, Barry's had some experience kind of recruiting some bigger time players at Arkansas. What does he kind of add to you guys as a recruiter? Well, he'll have a decide, you know, a decisive area that he'll recruit, but as coordinators, really him and Ryan um, have a smaller area than most of my coaches. So, um, he'll be at task for that specific area, especially his region here in Illinois. But one of the things I love about Barry is that I've, I've called this and said this a lot of times, some of your premier recruiters are very ambidextrous, right? They can really blend into and recruit anywhere in this country. And I think Barry uh, is one of the unique guys that can say that. Um, uh, I, you know, I myself, I always remember early on in my career, I would go in these areas that I never bit, did before, but you could have success based on your personality, your demeanor. Uh, your professionalism, and I think Barry fits that category very, very well. So he'll 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 go on the road with me as starting as early as Friday, uh, and I'll take him into really any offensive player uh, that uh, that that you know we want to talk about coming here to the University of Illinois because he can really bring that value, and nobody can talk about this system better than him. Thanks. Okay, we're gonna move on. We make a make a sub here, but uh, I think you guys will be thoroughly enjoyed and and. Uh, uh, I couldn't be more excited about uh, the transition to Coach Lundy here and, and uh, bringing him in. His first official day here in the building, so exciting day. I'll turn it over to Barry. Hold on. All right, everybody. Um, 
good to meet everybody in the world of 2022 as it is and uh, excited to be able to get front, in front of you today for a little bit and um, answer some of your questions. First day on the job, like Coach mentioned, and uh, it's been a whirlwind, but uh, we're off and running. Mark Torsani, who's a dear friend of mine, who's Coach's chief of staff, as you guys know, has, uh, has ran me around town. I've already been to the bookstore, had a good purchase already to start the day. My thumbprint's working. Uh, it's off to a good day. Let's see if we can keep it that way. So with that being my opening statement, um, obviously you guys uh, open it up to questions and let's let's get this thing started. Hey, Barry, Joey Wagner with the Line Eye Inquirer. Nice to meet you virtually here. Uh, things obviously are going really well for you at UTSA. Why was this the right move for you to make this jump back with Pratt and into the, the Big Ten? Well, I think it's about relationships, right? The business is one of the reasons that I went to uh, UTSA to begin with when I left Arkansas was because of the relationship that I'd formed with Jeff Trailer and the confidence I had in, in coach uh, as him as a head coach and what he was going to bring to the table. And I knew what he was going to get, uh, bring to the table every day and a new way he was going to lead and coach the program at UTSA. I had a lot of confidence in that. And so uh, I could certainly say the same thing for this opportunity when it came about with my history of working with Coach B uh, for five years. I spent you know, time on his staff at Arkansas and was, he was a great mentor uh, to me. I learned a lot during my transition from being in college early on, going, at, going into high school for a significant period of time, then back into the college game at my alma mater nonetheless. It was a, a great opportunity to uh, be mentored, to learn uh, from Coach uh, as he came from Wisconsin. And so that, you know, to fast forward four years later, and it's been a, uh, it's, got, it's hard to believe it's only been four years, but four years later, here I am with the opportunity to go to work with him in a different capacity. So it's about the same type of relationship and confidence that I had in Coach Trailer. Obviously, I had seen in, uh, that firsthand, had lived that firsthand uh, working for Coach and had seen the way he had led the program at Arkansas and the successes we had, even though it didn't end uh, the way that we all wanted to. Uh, and then you take the, that relationship that I had with Coach B, and then you, you look around the building, and there's an extension of those that uh, those relationships that I formed with Mark Torsani and Taylor Reed and Pat Pearson and Tank. I could go down the line of people that when I step in this building, there's a level of comfort and confidence in knowing that whose coach has surrounded himself with. And so uh, at the end of the day, even though it was a difficult decision uh, because of relationships I had formed with, um, you know, my, the, the coaches and players at UTSA, uh, but obviously knowing what I'm walking into and uh, having a familiarity with uh, Brett was ultimately the deciding factor for me. Thanks, Barry. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Joey. Hey, Coach, I'll jump in. Sounds like uh, I'm next up. Doug Bouchon from Rivals.com. Um, talking with uh, Coach Bielema just now, it sounds like you're going to be bringing your playbook with you and installing it in the spring. Um, can you just describe uh, that particular offense and, and what it's predicated on? Well, I think Coach addressed it. I was you know, here in the room as he talked about it. And I thought he did a great job of kind of defining some of the parameters there. But, uh, you know, it, it's um, it's something that really when Coach Trailer hired me at UTSA, we, he wanted to kind of blend some of his uh, some of his track record and experience. Uh, a lot of his track re record and experience was kind of based on a spread system and had actually been in the Art Browse system for a little bit. And, but he also, uh, Coach Trader, knew about my experience in pro style under Jim Chaney and Dan Enos there at Arkansas were two great influences for me from a philosophical uh, standpoint, offensive strategy standpoint. Coach Trailer was appealed, you know, uh, was interested in me being able to blend, um, you know, those type of philosophies and beliefs to build what, you know, would, would turn into our offense at UTSA. And it was a, it was a collaborative effort. Uh, coach put me in charge of that. And so that system has kind of been vetted and, uh, you know, uh, test withstood the test of the last two years. And so that system that was, you know, uh, really successful for us. And obviously we had really good players and a really good coaching staff that we're just going to, I'm going to take that model and the terminology, the, like you said, the playbook, which is, you know, it's not, not lugging around an old playbook. It's virtual, you know, it's like, you know, digital and all this stuff nowadays, but the bringing the playbook here and teaching this system that, uh, you know, basically that we use the last two years uh, is going to be the foundational aspect of what we do here. I mean, that's going to be the building blocks. Uh, and that was important for me uh, to, to be able to come here and to take what we had been successful with from just a, a vernacular standpoint uh, and, and start teaching it to these guys here. That was important. And coach was, you know, all about it, wanted me to do it, empowered me to do it. 
But obviously we're gonna have a different fit and flair here. Uh, it's not gonna look exactly like it did uh, with, with them because ultimately we wanna build uh, this offense um, uh, around our strengths, like coach mentioned, and, and we're gonna continue to uh, get to know that. I am in particular through the spring and, uh, and ultimately hopefully by the time we'll get to the fall, uh, we'll have a, an offense that's built around our player strengths. So uh, ultimately that's kind of how this all went, went, came about, Doug. Is there a particular skill set you're looking for uh, from the quarterback position? Well, I think it always starts with the ability to throw the football, right? I mean, that, that's where the quarterback has to start. And, uh, and then uh, after beyond that, it's like, well, okay, if, if they're a pocket passer and we, this system's got some flexibility to build around a pocket passer, if, it's a, if they have the ability to uh, help them supplement the game using their legs, then, then certainly that's something that we want to expose. And I think that's what you saw over the last two years at UTSA. Obviously, Frank Harris was our starter for the majority of the time this past year, but the year before, we had injuries and we had some shifts. We played four different quarterbacks. And so each week looked a little bit different depending who was playing for us. And so, um, you know, I think that's part of the, I think that's the way football is at this point in time, especially with the portal and the transition and guys transferring is like, you know, your team and your, your offense and even the quarterback room in particular, that those guys typically come in all shapes and sizes. You know, it's, it's hard to, to recruit a room full of five quarterbacks so that all have the same skill set, right? It's, it's really hard to, to do that in, in this time and age in football. And so inevitably you're going to recruit guys that have a different strength and different weaknesses. And I think it's important to be able to have a flexibility within that system that you have to, to play to those strengths. And, uh, and so that's kind of, that's kind of my mindset. I think it's a little bit kind of like my time in high school, right? You kind of a little bit kind of held hostage in high school to who's in your system, who's coming up and each year, maybe you, you might, you know, you might run the ball a whole lot more one year and use more play action and, the next year, you may have a guy that's a, a better drop back guy and you open up that aspect of your, you know, strategy standpoint. You may have a guy that's a really good zone read runner and, and you want to open that up. And that's certainly kind of what we experienced last year. So, um, you know, ultimately it starts, it's a, it's a long answer to a real short question. You guys know you'll figure me out. And I'm really good at that, um, that I can, I can give a long answer to a short question in a hurry. But ultimately, it's about delivery of the football accurately on time sitting in the pocket, and then you build around this, the, uh, you know, the six skill sets that are on the peripheral there. Thanks, Coach. Am I looking in the camera the right way here, everybody? Because You're I, good. You guys are, okay, good. I, this is a challenge because the camera's over here. You guys are here. I'm staying. I'm trying to stay focused here. Hopefully, that's not too awkward for y'all. I'm sure my wife will correct me if she sees this, if I'm looking at it. Right. So, we'll, we'll, we'll be better next round. Well, hey, Barry, this is Scott Beatty, WDWS Radio, and since I'm radio, I don't care where you look. Um, uh, great to meet you. Welcome to town. What uh, You mentioned maximizing strengths. What do you? How familiar are you with the roster right now and what your strengths will be, and, and, and how influx is that roster, and are you kind of waiting until all the pieces are there? And, and, you know, obviously, you may know more about the roster than even we do at this point, but are you still in a make it? creating mode or are you like trying to get it going right now yeah I think uh, I think that's a fair question Scott is, is you know obviously uh playing against Illinois this year I got a chance to see that a little bit but to be honest with you just didn't pay a whole lot of attention to that side of the ball I had my own worries and concerns during that course of the game but but through the course of the season uh because of my connection with coach B and and all the said guys I talked about earlier that are connected to this program you know I had a vested interest just to watch and pull from afar uh Illinois football so I got a chance to watch several of the games because of our games being at night or whatnot so I could identify and see you know the some of those big wins that uh that we had last year you know obviously featured the running game and I thought I thought that was really impressive to watch the backs run I think you know I think obviously one of the things about this that I can, you know, just without question um, say is the, one of the main reasons I'm sitting here before you all today is the fact that of my belief, uh, my foundational belief is uh, completely in line with Coach Bielema's belief about uh, physicality. And it starts with, you know, an identity of, of running the football, right? And so a physical brand of football. I think if you saw our football team play the last couple of years, we hung our hat on that part of it. And so uh, I know that, that even though I'm talking here about building to our strengths and playing to our strengths, and, and that's certainly, yes, uh, gonna, gonna happen. I think that's, that's the job of all coaches, right? To play to your strength of your team and what your talent base is. And so as we get going here, and it, I think it's really premature for me to be able to say, uh, 
you know, who's to say that maybe what was perceived as a weakness last year that we can't help transition into something that's that's more of a strength, right? Uh, and so a new set of uh, a perspective, a new a new lens for uh, coaches and players to be seen to each other. I've seen that really go well over the course of the years. You know, I've seen coaches and players with new perspective uh, shift their their belief about a certain player or about a certain strength or about even a certain weakness, you know? And so I think that that'll take care of itself over the course of time. But one thing that's not going to change and one thing that we're not going to waver on is the identity of uh, physicality and toughness that's required to win in college football. And so it might look a little different the way we're going to do that. It might be different than what was done here in the past, maybe a little bit different than what Maybe we did at Arkansas a little bit, but, you know, our last year at Arkansas, 2015 under Dan Enos, you know, I think we threw for over 3,000 yards, all the while being effective and running the football too. And so um, as we as we can continue to recruit and shape and get to know this roster, I think those are things that will come out in the wash more towards the end of spring and towards the end of fall, you know, as we get closer to game time. But what's not going to waver is, is the identity that we're trying to establish in running the football. Thanks a lot. Welcome to town. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. Hey, Barry. It's Jeremy Warner from uh, Illini Inquirer here. Uh, welcome to town. I want to pick up on quarterbacks. Um, you know, Frank Harris is a guy you kind of inherited on a roster. You're obviously inheriting a, a room of quarterbacks here. What's the key as a, as a play caller, as a quarterbacks coach, to, to, to developing them and getting the most potential out of guys that, that you didn't handpick uh, at the time? Yeah, that's a great question, Jeremy. And really, to be honest with you, that's what we dealt with for two years there at, at UTSA. Everybody, you know, the main guys that have been playing the bulk of the snaps were guys that are already recruited there, they're already on campus. And so I think it's my job as the coordinator and quarterback coach to, you know, is get to get in their minds, right? To really get to know them. And that was one of the things I think that we really saw um, a lot of growth with Frank, who it was our quarterback from year one to year two. Is year one, you know, we were basically limited with COVID. We were installing a new system. We didn't get a spring ball. We got a chance to get that three-week jump start window before fall camp started. And we had four guys competing for the job. And as we ended up hitting the ground running, you know, we got into the season uh, quickly without me really knowing our quarterback, you know, like really getting to know. And it's hard to know a guy without spring ball, right? Going through somewhat of a semblance of a fire, spring practice, spring scrimmages or whatnot. And so the jump between one year one and two was really significant, I think, because uh, I really started to understand him better and know him. So I think that's going to be uh, one of my main challenges. And I don't mean that in a negative way, like a challenge, like an obstacle. That's going to be one of my main points of emphasis. And it's really helped shape my, I think, my coaching career. Uh, it's really, really eye opening the last couple of years, how, how significant that factor is when you deal with your quarterbacks to know what makes them tick to know what they're comfortable with, to know what they're not comfortable with, to know how to create success for them, what's their wheelhouse, what's their level of uncomfortab un uncomfortability, is that, if that's a word, if it's not, we ought to start using it like that. You know, what's their level of being comfortable with certain schemes or uh, concepts? And so uh, that, that'll that be something that will be a huge priority for me here as I learn this roster. And as we look through the lens of the offense together, is, is what makes each guy tick, what's their strengths, what their weaknesses. And so to ultimately be able to empower them when it comes time to, for game time. You know, I'm, I'm just a really big believer in, you know, modern football, the way football's played. I mean, really, you play 75 plays a game, uh, Jeremy, and the quarterback in most systems, obviously in ours, it's, it's, there's a lot of decisions to be made. There's a lot of decisions to be made during the game, whether it be pre-snap or post-snap. There's a lot, of, a lot on the quarterback. And so as much as you can eliminate gray for them and as much as you can make that streamline, I think the better performance that you have a tendency to get out of them to where they can play, they can use, let their inherent, their natural abilities take over during the course of the game. And ultimately, ultimately, that's my job as the coordinator quarterback coach is to let whatever the strengths are of these players that play, the quarterback that's on the field, to let those things be freed up to be able to play free uh, within the system and, uh, and and to play with confidence. Thanks, Barry. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jeremy. Barry, I'll, Matt Stevens with IlliniGuys.com. Um, I'll ask you the same question I just asked Brett. Was the phone call or initial contact any different in nearly a decade than it was nearly a decade ago when you got the call from Brett to come to Arkansas in 2013? Well, in a lot of ways, it was just as exciting for, for me, uh, Matt. It was uh, very, you know, obviously it was a couple of years, you know, ten, nine years ago, I believe. You know, that was obviously a, 
a huge break for me uh, from a professional standpoint, uh, was getting, you know, hired from a uh, high school job to, to go coach a mama mater and, you know, coach, you know, coach said, Hey, I got a tight ends job. And I was like, I think I would have, you know, I would try to, I would have coached the kickers or the holders, you know, for an opportunity to go back to do that. And so it just so happened that it was a position that, that coach was really passionate about that, you know, the coordinators that, you know, at the end of the day, we probably used the tight end as well as anybody in America during the period that we were there at Arkansas. And, you know, when I first thought tight ends, like I thought, well, shoot, I can do that. You know, like that's, I can go coach one guy and run around the field, you know, and, it, and then all of a sudden we're in 12 personnel and 13 personnel. And it was a real challenge for me as a coach and it helped me grow so much. And um, I know I'm shifting off the focus of the original question, but so here we are nine years later, it's, it's, you know, the relational aspect of it obviously is I'm so much more comfortable with coach, uh, you know, than I was nine years ago, getting to know him every day was a new day. I think the first time I had him in the car, I think I tried to run a red light and uh, I didn't try to, I think I actually did. <laughs> and I think he, he, you know, I'm uptight. I'm just meeting him. I'm on the road. I'm taking him on Arkansas coach said, you're going to, you're going to run that red light. And I was like, well, look, it, it seems like I was trying to there for you coach. But anyway, so that hopefully the next time I'm on the ground with him, we won't have any traffic issues, but the, the excitement was very similar. Uh, the opportunity was just really something that I, that I just couldn't pass up that I felt so comfortable with and excited about the challenge. And so my family and I were very grateful for coach uh, uh, providing this opportunity and we're ready to get, get going on it. Thank you, Barry. Hey, Barry, I'm Gavin. Good to meet you. Um, Brett mentioned that a lot of people uh, in this business can talk, but not uh, everyone is a good teacher. Um, I'm curious, what did you literally teach at Bentonville and what did you learn from being in high school football and having so much success at that level? You know, I, that's a good question. By the way, Gavin, you said, Gavin, good to meet you, right? So that there's a lot of play on words there, Gavin. I like that. Uh, so, but anyway, that, I think that's a great question. It's, um, and I, one year I remember coach, he had us do an assignment. I'm sitting at the table in the staff room with coach Bielema and he, and he, he uh, empowered each of us to, or um, assigned each, each of us to kind of give a, maybe like a presentation to the staff that of some things that you had learned in your background and he has actually signed it. So one of the things he assigned me was, was what actually what your question is, what, what did I glean from my time as a, an educator in, in Bentonville high school? And how did that help me make me a better coach? And so I was actually a PE teacher. Uh, now, if you hear, if, if you were in one of my PE classes, it was, uh, it was pre, it was a pre AP or AP PE, I like to call it. So we tried to take it to another level, you know, that always alarmed them, by the way, seventh and eighth graders, if you tell them the first day that it's, that it's a AP PE, that'll freak them out, right? So don't do that. They just want to be a normal PE, but, but in all seriousness, during my time as a educator, there's a lot of training that goes on, right? And one of the things that they spend an extensive amount of time with training is teaching you how to reach your students, right? And obviously as a PE teacher, I didn't, you know, do a lot of classroom work with them. I did a lot of organizational things. And, um, but one of the things I committed myself to do, here I am, I, I was the co-offensive coordinator play caller at San Jose State 2004. I made a transition uh, back to high school, which is a really pretty lengthy story in itself, but really at the root of that was a family issue. I thought it was gonna be a pit stop for me. It turned into an ex a significant amount of time. Um, and so my first year, here I am going from play caller, co-offensive coordinator at San Jose State to now, part of my assignments at Bentonville was coaching and teaching seventh grade PE. And I, and I really had to make a decision uh, professionally, like, okay, here, here's, what the, here's what I made a decision I was gonna do. If I was gonna do this, I was gonna do it right, right? If I was gonna do it, I was gonna try to be the best educator and teacher that I could be. And so I really tried to jump into that world and, and learn. And so during those in-services, when they taught you about the different types of learners, right? A visual learner, a, a kinesthetic learner, an auditory learner, uh, that stuff really kind of enlightened me to, you know, I've got a room full of guys here as an offensive coordinator, or quarterback coach that each one of them, even though I may have five quarterbacks in the room, there may be, uh, you know, two of them that learn through visual learning. There may be one that learns through hearing and can grasp it, but yet there may be yet one more that needs a walkthrough to make that come to life. And so that, that moment in time for me, that period of time was really beneficial to me because it, it helped open my eyes to that not everybody learns like Barry Lunny, right? I, like I have a certain way of learning just like each and every one of you on the screen do today. And so that time was really beneficial for me to help uh, peel back, you know, when I'm teaching and I'm communicating, 
I'm talking to a wide variety of learners. And so I've, I've tried to be very conscientious of that moving forward. And I think that's helped me become a better coach. Thanks, Barry. Thank you, Gavin. Hey, Coach. Nice to meet you. Alec Bussey. Welcome to Champagne. Um, quick kind of question. Coach Bielma mentioned the term tempo um, for tempo and pro style. As an offensive coordinator and quarterback, how does that kind of influence what you do with a quarterback position? Well, you know, that's just something that kind of coach and I, we at UTSA, we kind of, you know, sit around the table and, you know, some of these systems have names or whatnot. And we don't, I'm not saying that's the name of our system, but if you just kind of, it's kind of a snappy little way of, um, you know, to say, hey, we're, we want to play with tempo, but this isn't like, uh, you know, toward pace. I think if you looked at our time of possession last year, one of the things that we did in our system is play comp complementary team football, right? That's going to be critical to our success here. We're not trying to play so fast that we put our defense in jeopardy by playing a bunch of snaps and having to be on the field with quick turnaround. But yet we want to be able to have enough pace in our system uh, to affect the defense. At the end of the day, one of the things that I want to do, one of the things that I, that I have a vision for, and one of the things that we did at UTSA is we tried to change the pace of the game. Like we wanted to dictate the pace of the game, whether it be a quick play, a, a no huddle, a huddle, a, a fast huddle like all these different ways that you're able to do that. That's really important that we do that because I think that's a weapon for you offensively. And so um, that name is not anything that, you know, it's just something that coach and I identified with as we talked over the last few days about like, really, okay, we don't play tempo, but we do not want to lose the elements of pro style football, right? That A, uh, that have stood the test of time. B is certainly foundation of coach Bielema's belief and mine as well. And so there's a certain, uh, you know, a certain mentality of pro style football that we're not going to gravitate away from, but also trying to blend this with maybe uh, being in the, you know, at the line more, being in the gun a little bit more uh, than what's been done here in the past. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. We're going to wrap up with that. Yep. Brett's telling me that we're going to wrap it up. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Barry.